All right, so today I am going to be making one of my absolutely most requested bracelets that I've ever had in the history of me having this channel. Whenever I wear the bracelet, I actually forgot to put one on, um, but when I wear this bracelet on camera, I always get asked, how did you make that? What did you do? And I just have never had the time to sort of sit down and think about how I would do this as a kit. So I'm not gonna be doing this as a kit. I'm just gonna be doing it as a project. I will make sure to leave a list in the description box that's below this video, and it will uh, have the list of everything that I've used today. It's not very many parts, so it's pretty easy. Uh, you can maybe use some of your stash if you've got some extra seed beads kicking around. Anyway, so I'm just gonna show you the, the uh, technique. Now, I do have to preface this with the fact that I am not a crocheter. I just taught myself how to do this. So if you are a crocheter and you're looking at me going, girl, your technique sucks. <laughs> well, it's probably because I don't know what I'm doing. I come from a long line of really great uh, crocheters in our family here. Crocheters, that's a hard word to say. Anyway, um, there's lots of people in my family that are really good at it, but I've never really been taught. So I just kind of made up my own thing. So if you are a master crocheter or you at least know a little bit about it, then do whatever works for you. But if you've never done any crocheting before, if I can do it, then you can do it. So this is much easier than I'm sure it's going to look. So let's get started on this. So what we're going to need is a pair of sharp scissors of some sort. They don't, you know, we're only gonna use them like maybe once. Um, we do need a um, crochet needle. Now this is a size five or a 1.90 millimeter. I don't sell these, but most hobby stores do, like um, Hobby Lobby or Joann's or any of those kind of places where you can buy knitting needles, that sort of stuff. Um, you might be able to find it on Amazon. I don't usually like to send people there, but these are not hard to find. You just may have to, you know, Michael's I know has them, but you want a small one. You don't want one that has a great big, huge um, hook on the end. So anything in and around that size, I have gone down to, I think, even a three. But I find this one sort of comfortable to use. Now, speaking of the comfort, I don't find this particularly easy to use because there's not a lot to grip onto and I've got arthritis. And please excuse my manicure because it looks terrible. Anyway, um, so you can find some, I think, that have like a bit more of a blocky thing on the end that might make it easier to uh, hold on to. But anyway, so that's what I'm using is a number five or a 1.90 millimeter. I'm also gonna be using a thread zapper. You don't have to use that. You can use glue. You could be brave and use a lighter, but um, we do sell these and they're uh, sort of one of those things that is just great for what I'm about to do today. I'm also gonna be using Eslon. Now I always get asked the question, is Eslon the same as Ceylon or is it the same as this? Eslon and Ceylon are exactly the same uh, cording. They're just put out by the same manufacturer, but um, marketed as a different uh, product, but they're exactly the same. But I think this is the 0.5 uh, Tex is what they call it. Um, so I I don't if I'm gonna I know I'm gonna get a lot of questions saying, well, can I use this and I can can I use that? I don't know. You'll just have to experiment. We do sell this. We have I don't know 60 different colors, so you should be able to find something that works for you. If um, you want to try something different, then go ahead and try it and see if it works. I wouldn't use Irish wax linen because one, you're going to need an awful lot. And uh, two, I think it'd be too sticky. But if you have other um, stringy materials in your arsenal, give it a try. You know, I, I never say that what I do is the only thing that you can do. It's just, this is what I use. So I'm going to be using Eslon. And I'm going to keep like a little, um, you know, bullnose clip or something like that. I've got some little um, accent beads and I'm going to be using some 6 aught seed beads. So these are two different Mayuki seed beads. These are um, in our on our website. There are 6-94501, which is the sort of darker uh, color, and the 6-94506. And I love them because they're the Mayuki Picasso beads and I just love how they look. So the pattern that I did, if you're wanting to you know, follow along, I use two of one, two of another, two of one, and then I put a the just a little metal bead, and then I just reverse the pattern. So it just kind of goes two, 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 one, two, 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 one. So, you know, it doesn't have to be anything in particular. It just, you know, that's kind of what I did. I didn't want to have to use a ton of these uh, little faceted beads. 
but you know the the one that I wear all all the time on my videos has two different sizes of these little uh, beads and we do sell lots of different um, small beads like this uh, in our five dollar bagged findings section and they're really good value so you know you can use anything you don't need to put metal beads in there at all if somebody's allergic to metal and they um, you don't want to put those in there don't if you want to put more metal, metal beads in, put them in. You know, it's really just super, super flexible. So, um, and that's about all you're going to need. Maybe a little GS Hypo if you don't have a thread zapper. But other than that, you, we don't need a lot. So what I uh, recommend is to, well, I don't recommend you need to. You need to pre-string on all of your beads. So the first thing we're going to do is you're going to cut yourself um, well, you're not going to cut anything. This is a mistake I made today because I was trying to find actual measurements for this um, to be able to tell you. So I ended up cutting my Eslon, which was silly because then I shortchanged myself on the beads, but you know, I can still teach the demo. Anyway, you're going to just pre-string all of your beads. So you're going to need a total of about 165 beads somewhere along there. So, you know, you're just going to keep stringing on to your spool. I do recommend buying this by the spool. So I did cut um, six times six, 360 inches of this. Um, so, you know, if you don't, if you only have a little bit, it's not going to work. You need a, a good chunk of your Eslon. So the easiest thing to do is just start putting all your beads on there and just leave it on the spool. And then you don't really need one of these little bull nose clips. But um, I also use that to help kind of push my beads up a bit. And I'll sort of explain that as I go along. So you want to pre-string all of your beads and leave them on the spool. But I already had another little piece cut here. So I figured I would show you. So I'm just going to sort of pretend that I'm going to make one out of this. And I will show you what I do. So on the opposite end to where the uh, beads are, we're going to just start and make a little slip knot. So again, I know that um, people that know how to knit and crochet and all that stuff have fancy little ways of creating these, and I don't know how to do that. So all I do is I take my uh, cording and I fold it in half, and I give it a little twist, and I take that, and I kind of go over top of the long one. So all I'm doing is creating a slip knot like that. And then I put my needle inside, and then tighten it up. So just make any kind of a slip knot. I don't recommend tying it on there because then it doesn't have any, um, you know, it's not loose because you want to be able to pull that open and close uh, if you want. So the first thing that you're going to do is pull down a bead. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to crochet just in case you don't know how. So I find the best thing with crocheting is to have a little bit of tension. So you want some of this on these fingers and then I like to hold on to this. Now, as always, the first couple are really tough to do because you don't really have anything to hold on to. But to crochet, all I do is I take my little needle and I sort of, I bring it around and swoop and then I pull through that little loop and there's one. So that's all you're doing is pulling and swooping through like that. So I'll just do a couple so you kind of see what I do here. Now, we don't want these loops tight on the needle. We want, um, I guess it's a hook. It's not really a needle, it's a hook. But we don't want it tight on there because if you pull it too tight, you're not gonna be able to make a nice chain. So one of the things that I've learned along the way, if I wanna have an even tension, is I pull my um, loop back to about here, which will open up that little um, loop on the thread to about where I want it. I then make the um, like my little swoop around and it just kind of ends up the right size. Now, if it falls off, don't worry about it. Just put it back in and then just pull through. So that's the nice thing about crocheting is it's pretty easy. And this is very forgiving in that it does not have to be perfect. So I would recommend if you've never done any crocheting, just to kind of play around with it a little bit, find your groove and just don't have a tight, a super tight tension. We want our, um, you can see all my stitches are pretty close to each other, but they don't have to be exact. And the nice thing about, other nice thing about crocheting is if you don't like what you've done, you just pull back like that. And you can pull back until you have like your first one, and then you can start again. So super simple, you cannot get much more simple. So let's start the project. So the first thing that I would do is I like to use my little bullnose clip and kind of clip back down here and it helps keep the beads 
towards the front versus all falling down the back. But if you've got them on a spool, you can do the same sort of thing. It just is hard if all your beads are all down on one end. So the first thing I'm going to do is take one bead and I pull it down and I'm going to just do a stitch around it. So you just kind of ignore that it's there and you're just going to go around it. And then I'm going to do two stitches without anything in it. And then I'm going to pull down another bead. And I'm going to make sure I'm on camera here. And again, you just swoop around and bring that through. Now that, that counts as sort of one stitch. And then you're going to do two blank ones. I call them like, you know, yeah, blanks is sort of what I used. When I used to teach this in the store, that's what I would always call it is two blanks. So it's like bring down one bead and stitch around it. And I'm probably not using the right terminology because again, I don't know what I'm doing, but I just like, I love doing this technique and it's super easy to teach and it's super easy to do, but I probably don't use the right words. So forgive me if I don't, but <laughs> anyway, I'm sure you'll get the idea. So we did one around the bead. And now if you want, push it down there a little bit and that will open it up because I could feel it was getting a little bit tight because it went around that bead. Pull one and two through, there we go. So you can see that this is, just very repetitious. I just turned on, um, what did I, what was I watching? Um, I can't even remember what it's called. Anyway, I just turned on uh, a series and I just watched a couple episodes and uh, created the one that I'm going to switch over to in a second here. So, you know, you can, once you get to know what you're doing, it's, it's pretty simple. So pull your bead down, stitch around it, and then do one, two. Really, really simple. And if it doesn't go in there, just what I often do, if it doesn't go through, that means your tension's too tight. So pull back so that it goes, um, it opens that up and then pull that through and you see it, it'll just pop right in there. So that's all you're going to do until you have completed. So you'll have your bead, first bead, two blanks, a bead, two blanks, a bead, two blanks. And you're just going to have that same pattern all the entire way along until you end up with a really long um, piece. And I'm just going to show you that. So I created one, but like I said, I made a mistake in that I was trying to measure and like a silly person, I cut mine off the end. So normally I would have 161 or 165 beads, something like that. I only ended up with 133 here. So we'll see um, you know, if it fits and all that sort of stuff because um, Oops, I just pulled some of these off of here. Well, I'm just gonna have to remove that. Um, maybe I can put those on there, I'm not sure. Let me see. All right, so um, yeah, I can actually do those. I'm just gonna pop those on the end. So don't cut your uh, S-Lon off of the spool. That is my lesson of the day. Because, <laughs> you know, when I'm trying to do things, I'm thinking of 10 different things at one time, and I really wanted to have an accurate measurement for you. And then I, you know, messed up and didn't realize until I was, you know, about 90% of the way through that that's what I had done. And I went, oh, well, that's not going to work. So I'm just going to do these last two beads so that my pattern continues. So one around the bead and two blanks. And then my last bead, I'm going to do one around the bead. And then I'm just going to check and see what I've got at the beginning here. So in the beginning, I've got maybe one, what have I got there? No, I've got two after. So I don't really wanna to have too many um, in between because I like so that you don't see uh, where it joins. So I'm gonna do one around the bead and then I'm gonna just do one, sorry, it keeps coming off here because I don't have much to hold on to. So I've just did one around the bead and then I'm going to do one and that's it. So now what you do to end that is you just kind of open that up. You're gonna take that end and come through there. Just go through the little loop that you've got there and you're gonna pull. And that will just naturally kind of tighten it up and you can't even see that at all. So then what I do is I've got my two ends here. So the end I started with and the end that I'm going to finish with. And then I just tie some knots. So I don't really ever notice it when it's on me, 
but I do get them so that they're fairly close. Just kind of pull that together so you can't really see it. But um, I tie like a, just like you're tying your shoes. So I'll just show you what I did here again. But you can tie a surgeon's knot too. So you can go around once, twice, and kind of pull that through. You just want it to be nice and neat. So I'm pull it, putting a bit of tension on there so that it gets nice and nice and tight in there. And just make sure it's close. It's, it's always hard when I'm under the camera trying to figure out how I did this. Let me just try it again. I'm just going to go once, just like I'm tying my shoes there, because that doesn't, didn't want to work the other way. And now I'm going to do a surgeon's knot. So what I'm going to do is bring that through like I'm tying my shoes, but I'm going to bring it through one more time. And then make sure there's no gap there. It looks pretty good. Get it in the middle and make sure it's nice and tight. And you just pull really, really tight. So now you can't really see anything. And once you wear this a little bit, it will kind of loosen up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using a thread zapper. But if you don't have a thread zapper, I would glue that really well and then trim it off after. I wouldn't do it in the... Um, manner that I'm doing it right now. I would glue it like crazy with some GS Hypo so that's not going to go anywhere. But I'm going to be using a thread zapper. Now you can only use this on um, non-natural fa um, fibers. So you can use it on polyesters and things like that. Like it won't work on um, cotton, that sort of stuff. So you just make sure that when you've got one of these that you're using fresh batteries. If you've got really old batteries, often they don't work. So you just hold the end until it starts smoking or getting pretty hot. Sometimes you don't see anything smoking. Mine's just getting really hot. Now I probably should have those a little bit shorter, but I want to be able to show you. So you just kind of like push down and you, you know, kind of do that. And that's probably a little bit much. So let me just trim a little bit off there. And then you just kind of want to make sure that you're only hitting that end there because if you hit the middle of this, it will um, sear right through it. So you can just take your fingers and kind of push down. And then you could take a pair of pliers. Just got a pair of uh, pliers here. And you can kind of like squish that down a little bit if you want. And it'll kind of burnish the end so you don't see it. But over time, like I don't even notice that. I'm going to take my other pliers. I'm just going to push that down there. I've been wearing the one that I wear often on my videos for, mm, gosh, maybe more than 10 years. And I put that thing through a lot of um, punishment and you can, you know, it, it holds up. So I can kind of see that a little bit, but I never notice it when it's on. So now in its full length, now this one is short by about 30 beads. So in its full length, you can wear this in many different ways. So uh, I wore it to a wedding two weeks ago and what I did was I just doubled it and I just hung it um, over my neck and just used it as an accent, as a necklace. The other way that I have worn it over my neck, and I would show you, but it's really hard on camera. Um, so I, would, I will put it on like one long piece like this and then I will wrap it around my neck again and create like a bit of a, a choker. So I've got like a choker around my neck and then one long piece hanging down. So that's how I wear it as a necklace. I gave one to my mom and she has worn it where she takes it and brings it around her neck and brings one end through the other and pulls it up so that it's like a choker kind of thing, like a lariat sort of thing, but more like a choker because that goes around her neck. Uh, so there's, you know, lots of different ways that you can wear it uh, as a necklace. My favorite way is to wrap, just wrap it around my wrist. So all I do is I just wrap it around like that and then when I get to this part where it's a little bit you know hard to get around I just sort of do this and there we go now if you want because what I do I like it a little bit tighter on me I don't like it this loose I will take it let me get this off now and this is where it will stretch a little tiny bit over time uh, because I, I kind of make it really, really snug. And then I get one more loop. I'm not too sure if I'm going to be able to because I didn't make this one the right size, um, the right length. But I take this and I go pretty tight. And it looks really tight for now. But then 
So I might, yeah, I can get it one more. So it doesn't look like you can, but you kind of just take it and squoosh it on. And then you go backwards and just keep kind of moving your, no, <laughs> it looks awkward. I'm hoping I'm under a camera. It's going to look tight until I kind of get my, there we go. So that loosens it up, but it made a little bit snugger around my wrist. And then I got one more loop. So now when you have the actual length of about 161, 165 beads, something like that, you'll get another uh, couple loops. And so it's quite wide looking. And I just think it's so cute and it's timeless. I've been wearing mine, like I said, for about 10 years and I get compliments every time I wear it. So I really hope that you enjoyed this one. It's one of the most simple techniques. It's a good stash buster. If you've got some six aught seed beads, um, you could use anything like that. Anything that you can get your, um, like I didn't, I didn't really use a needle, but you could use a, uh, a big eye needle to make it easier to get the beads on. But really all you want to make sure is that you can get that um, S long cording through your beads and you're set to go. And so that's it. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, please make sure to give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment and tell me uh, what you're going to do with it. Um, make sure that if you do put this away, like in a, a jewelry box or something like that, that the, one of the things that I can recommend is to wrap it around like a, an old um, paper towel holder or something like that, or toilet paper holder, um, just like the roll, because this can tangle really easily if you just throw it in the bottom of your jewelry box. And especially if you're going to travel, wrap it around something so that it does not tangle. Uh, so there's my little tip for the day. Um, so um, make sure if you haven't subscribed to my channel that you do. I'm trying to put out as many videos as I can lately, and I'm darn close to my 100,000 um, subscribers. So please make sure that you join the, the crew if you uh, like your con my content. And that's about it. So thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on the next one.